I'm Becca. Today, you'll be learning all about Twine. Twine is a collaborative, open source coding platform that allows users to create interactive, nonlinear stories. Essentially, it's a program that allows people to combine two of the best things in life, games and stories. Now I'll hand it over to Meyer. He's going to begin by walking you through how to create a basic literary creation in Twine to see how the platform works. Then you're free to weave your own tale. Take it away, Meyer. Thanks, Becca. Let's get started by opening up the Twine website, twinery.org. Press the Use It Online button and read through the introduction information by pressing the Tell Me More button. After clicking through there, you can select your preferred language from the side menu. Twine reaches a high threshold accessibility by offering a wide range of languages to choose from. Before we get started, note the Import from File and Archive menu options. This is how you can ensure that your work will be saved. After you hit Archive, your file will be saved to your computer as an HTML document, which you can then upload again later using the Import from File button. With all that said, hit the green Story button and type in the name of your story. First off, you'll want to check your story format. You can do this by clicking on your project name and selecting Change Story Format. Twine games most commonly run on Harlow, Snowman, or Sugarcube, which will each influence the toolset you use when getting into the bones of your story. Sugarcube has been around since older versions of Twine, so it has many more community help resources than the other formats. Sugarcube also has the built-in ability for your readers to save their story progress into slots, like many RPG games. Snowman is good for those with a lot of practice or interest in using JavaScript and CSS, which makes it useful for building a heavily customized reading experience. Harlow is the default story format in Twine, and is focused on being accessible and quick to start with, in exchange for not having as many fancy features. We'll begin using this format today, so you won't have to change anything on this screen. Hit X or press Escape to close that pop-up. You should see a block titled Untitled Passage in your workspace grid. Double-click on it to open it. This is where your game or story will begin, like the title screen or the first page. It's a good idea to title your blocks so you can remember what it is and where it belongs in your web. Let's call this one Story Start. Only things written in the body block will show up on your finished page. Start your text with Body. You can use these tags to format how your text appears and get a little fancy. Remember to keep what you write short. Each page will usually look better without having your words go off the bottom. Think like a PowerPoint slide. Every bracket option you use will create another page and link them together, like so. Make sure what you put after the arrow is what you'd like the box to be titled. You'll have to edit both the title and the text in the first box if you want to change it later. When you have something typed on this first page, you can close the box with the X or Escape, which will keep your changes in the current workspace grid. When you make changes to big files, like the CSS sheet, keep in mind that you may find it helpful to copy and paste what you have into a Word document somewhere else, just to have the original version on hand in case something goes wrong. Click on the second box. The process is the same as the first. Add text to the body, use brackets to link to the next page, and so on. You can even make paths branch by including multiple brackets. Eventually, you'll have a big web of boxes, which is where the titles and arrows come in handy. Now, let's preview what you have so far. Mouse over the box and select the play triangle from the toolbar. Clicking this will open a browser tab, which will show you what your readers will see. And this is all you need to know if you want to make a basic text adventure. But if you want to get fancier, you can add more features with CSS, HTML, and JavaScript. We'll go over a few CSS examples to get you started. To edit the CSS, you'll want to open the style sheet here. The first thing you might have your eye on changing are colors and fonts. This is where those changes will go. In the CSS style sheet, start by typing tw story bracket. To change the background color, let's add background color colon pound sign 581845 semicolon. Make sure you remember the semicolon. The color here is an HTML notation. Sites like htmlcolorcodes.com can help you find the number for the color you want to use. Next, the font. On the next line, let's add color colon pound sign DAF7A6 semicolon. This will change the color of most of the text on your page. 
for a different font style on the next line. Let's add font dash family colon sans dash serif semicolon. It's usually best to use fonts that are easier to read. Not all fonts will work in all browsers, but you can add multiple fonts as a failsafe. Separate them with commas, like this. Now, let's change the font size. On the next line, let's add font dash size colon 1em semicolon. 1em equals 16 pixels, which is the default text size in browsers. In order to find the em number you want, you can divide the number of pixels tall you want your font by 16. You can also guess and keep plugging in different numbers until you find a size that looks good. Now, close the p-lines with a final bracket. It should look something like this. Then press the X or Escape key to close out of the style sheet, and click the Preview button on one of your blocks to test the look. You've now got a different aesthetic than the default black and white. And this is just the start of what you can customize with your Twine game. For more in-depth tutorials, you can return to the Twinery homepage. On the right, you will see some buttons. The Wiki button will bring you to the Twine Wiki, which houses many tutorials and answers to frequently asked questions. The Forums button will take you to the Twine Forums, where you can read through other questions other creators have asked, or ask your own if you can't find a solution. As you get more comfortable with the platform, you can add complexity to your stories using variables, conditional logic, images, CSS, and even JavaScript. For more information on those, check out W3Schools. They have a vast collection of free online tutorials about coding. And don't forget to check out our collection here at the library. Thanks for watching. Go spin yourself a tail and create your own text adventure. Feel free to share your creation using a platform like Itch.io or Dropbox. And if you're especially proud, use the hashtag Gwinnett Library so we can even take a look.